One of the things this bill really addresses are project labor agreements and made in the USA. It's important that this bill, that going forward, that we look at what Americans make. We have to start to remember that our neighbors and what they do for a living, it's important. How we're able to be able to get them and help them to be able to keep jobs is important. <clears throat> the jobs that we're talking about here, we'll start with an apprenticeship. Apprenticeship is the beginning of, of learning a trade to be able to do that. And the building trades are uniquely positioned to be able to, to offer those apprenticeship programs. Community colleges can offer those programs, et cetera. But at the end of the day, you have to have opportunities for people to be able to learn how to work with their hands again. We have gone through, in this country, we've gone through a, a cycle where no matter what, you went to high school, you, ha you had to go to college. That's not the way it's always been in America. America, you used to go, first they came out of the farms and went into the, went into the uh, manufacturing and, uh, to be able to do that. Now, uh, people have gone out of high school and have gone into college in terms of being doctors, lawyers, et cetera. But that's not what builds this country. This country is built by sweat, hard work, and back-breaking work sometimes to be able to do it. We've learned to work much smarter, and we can do that with, uh, uh, with the tools that are out there. But we need to have those apprenticeship jobs to be able to come in to replenish the workers that, that build infrastructure. We need to get back to having big ideas. Big ideas are what is the way out for, for America to be able to do it. We've led the way in many instances, whether it's with the internet and all the social media to be able to do it, but we've led in big ways when it came to NASA, when it came uh, for opportunities to be able to uh, think big and make things happen. In World War II, Akron, Ohio basically learned how to make synthetic rubber so that <clears throat> we could win the war. That was a big idea. Uh, also, FDR, uh, in the beginning, we went and went after the poorest area in the United States, the Tennessee Valley. And we went and we captured one of the rivers that really tore up that, those communities all the time. And they put in the dam systems there and generated the electricity that was necessary to be able to help those people to be able to get out of the poverty that they were in. Many people thought these ideas would never work. In fact, every time that the bank has come up, people have poo-pooed the idea as being legitimate. In fact, some of the struggles we've had to be able to get people to actually buy in has been people do not understand that we need a different way of thinking again. Pay as you go system just doesn't work at the end of the day. We need that to, to do the small portion that they're designed for, but to do the big things, we need this National Infrastructure Bank to make it happen. The wages that we're talking about here are Davis-Bacon. And why is Davis-Bacon important? Davis-Bacon sets the standard for your region. That means you can't have somebody come in from another region or another area come in and undercut the wage, wages and the benefits and the standard of living in that community. It's important that Davis-Bacon be, and, and it's, Davis-Bacon wages are paid, but it's important that you understand why Davis-Bacon wages are important. That's the community standard that everyone who lives in that community that does that job gets paid, period. It's important that they get that and you don't have somebody continuing to come in and lowball and undercut a local community. So you actually undercut the uh, wage and the standard of living in that community. Those are important things that we have to be able to do. And that's why this bill, HR 6422, is a way to finance infrastructure. Infrastructure at the end of the day is the answer to what we need. 